Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Web of Conspiracy. I am your host, Adam Webb. Uh, it's great to be back with you this week. Hopefully, hopefully, and do not have any of the issues that I had last week. We'll keep our fingers crossed, and with any luck, I'll be able to make it through the half hour without having to split the show up in multiple pieces the way that I did last week. So I apologize for that inconvenience last week, and uh, with any luck uh, going forward, uh, today will be a smooth sailing, so keep our fingers crossed. Um, a few announcements uh, about the show here uh, going forward. Um, there will be no show next week. Um, a little uh, little uh, unexpected. Um, for those of you who have been listening to me for a while now, know that I've been uh, battling melanoma for the last few months. Uh, it was discovered at the end of August, and I've had two surgeries up to this point and still have been unable to completely remove all of it. Um, I, was, I did manage to catch it fairly early in staging, so... Uh, It doesn't appear to have spread anywhere else, but we're just trying to uh, remove as much of the area that's been uh, uh, infiltrated with the melanoma cells, uh, the cancerous cells. So I have a surgery scheduled uh, rather short notice uh, next week. So unfortunately, I will not be able to do a show next week. Um, I will, however, uh, have every intention of doing a show um, the following week. So uh, I will post uh, details as as I go forward. Uh, uh, But once again, no show next week as uh, it does take me a little bit of time to recover uh, from the the surgery itself, the anesthesia, the medication and all that. So I want to make sure I'm very lucid and able to to provide you with a great show, not be uh, under the influence of pain medication. So um, that being said, uh, some other uh, more upbeat announcements that I have. for those of you who uh, have not seen up to this point, I have uh, I haven't quite put all the finishing touches on the show's website, but it is up and running at this point. It's just a, a home page that gives all the links to the social media, as well as the latest episode um, to the show. For those of you who listened last week uh, through the website, you would have had some difficulty because of the posting of the multiple episodes. It gives the latest one on the website. So unfortunately, you'd have to go back into the Spreaker page or wait for the download on iTunes to be able to uh, listen to all of that. Um, so I apologize for that inconvenience, but it gives the latest episode there. Um, so once this is up and running, it'll be available there as well as uh, the easiest way is to just sign up for Spreaker and listen to it through Spreaker. It's free and it's pretty simple to do. Uh, so that's the easiest way, but if you don't want to do that and you just want to listen through the website or you want to download later on iTunes, then that's perfectly fine. Um, and at any rate, as I said, um, hopefully we won't have those issues this week. But at any rate, the show's, up, is, the show's website is up and running. Um, I have some plans for it in the future. Uh, I've contemplated to being able to kick around an idea of possibly a, a forum page where uh, fans of the show can go on there and talk and discuss some of the things that... Uh, that I talked about on this week's show. Um, I've also kind of kicked around some other ideas about uh, kind of putting some things up on there in regards to uh, links and things of the nature about topics that I talk about. Um, For instance, today's show is the ancient astronaut theory. So my thought process has been, well, perhaps, uh, you know, maybe post some things up on there in regards to that, show some of the artwork and that's, uh, and and some of the other depictions that uh, I'm gonna talk about on today's show. Um, so that's going to be something that I'm looking forward to adding here down the line. Uh, as I said, this is uh, uh, the operation is all on me at this point, so I haven't brought in a producer to help me with the show quite yet. Something I'm thinking about doing as well. Uh, nevertheless, going forward, I have some plans to kind of expand and do some other things. Um, for those of you who are fans of uh, TuneIn Radio, I'm in the process of uh, getting the show syndicated to TuneIn Radio. Um, not sure uh, at this point. I have not heard back from them. I'm still awaiting details on uh, how soon before I'll be able to have the show up on uh, TuneIn Radio. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be an issue of just making sure that I have enough content available. So I'll have to do a few more shows before uh, before that happens. Um, nevertheless, uh, that's also a form I'm looking to be able to release the show and, and, and some other formats as well going forward. Um, so stay tuned for announcements and all that. I, I try, I'll try to post that stuff up on the social media pages, the, the Facebook, the Twitter, and the Google Plus pages uh, as going forward in, in terms of what I'm able to do with the show. Um, I apologize. Uh, I wanted to be able to get on there and do a little bit more with the uh, with social media this last week, but 
uh, have not been able to. Uh, I, I will continue to improve my efforts into making sure that I share some of this information uh, rather than just uh, waiting till I'm on air to discuss it. Um, before I get into today's show, um, the main topic, which uh, for the record, uh, you know, I'm going to have basically 20, 25 minutes to talk about um, the main topic. And so it's going to be very brief uh, and one that I could talk about for hours. So for those of you who are fans of the ancient alien theory, the ancient astronaut theory, um, you're probably going to know just as much as I'm going to give out today. Uh, but there may be some things that you haven't come across. So that's my hope and my goal for those of you who already are uh, interested in it or believe in the theory. Um, so bear with me. But before I get into that, um, I just wanted to briefly mention um, Obama, President Obama's debacle with this uh, Affordable Care Act. Uh, it would appear more and more likely that Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, is, is eventually going to be uh, repealed. Uh, this has turned into a nightmare, uh, poorly planned, poorly executed on just about every single level. Uh, the backtracking and the apologies, um, they just don't work well with the American people. Um, his approval ratings are some of the lowest that they've been. Um, and I don't know that there is any real recovering uh, from this kind of a situation for the president. So um, comparing us to being a fumble or you know, kind of downplaying some of the mistakes that have been made here, it, it's it's tremendous. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, only uh, 100,000 people roughly uh, signed up for it. And, you know, of course, there's some technology issues there that in, uh, inhibited that. But uh, Piers Morgan, the uh, host on CNN, um, had an interesting, funny tweet. While I'm not a particularly huge fan of his, I did find it funny that he uh, tweeted that more people signed a petition to have him deported from the United States rather than uh, people who signed up for Obamacare. So I think that's rather telling <laughs> in terms of uh, the direction that that's going. Um, unfortunately, uh, there is some work that needs to be done before any kind of universal health care uh, is going to be able to go into effect. And it's going to require a greater uh, bipartisan effort than what has been had. So uh, I believe that, uh, that this Obamacare, this Affordable Care Act will eventually be repealed within the next year or so. Uh, nevertheless, I, I've been wrong before and I could be wrong again, but at this point things are not, um, not progressing very smoothly here. So, okay. So transitioning now, and this is not a seamless transition nevertheless, however, the ancient astronaut theory. Now this, this is a, a theory that has been around for mm, a few decades now. Um, and to uh, give a very brief summation, it is a theory that states that mankind was created in part by extraterrestrials who visited this planet thousands of years ago and have and were visiting during uh, a primitive times. Uh, long ago and uh, helped assist mankind in development that is in a very brief nutshell how this worked how it's described by by most who espouse the theory um, some of the big names in behind the theory uh, eric von Donneken, uh wrote the perhaps the opus the chariots of the gods um, as well as the the late zachariah sitchin who wrote a number of books uh, in regards to uh, the ancient astronaut theory uh, and, and uh, focus real heavily on a lot of the work that he did, particularly with the Sumerians. Um, uh, those are two of the bigger names now. Uh, consequently, uh, the Ancient Aliens show, uh, which I'm sure I've got a few listeners who are uh, who watch that show as well. That's on the History Channel networks. Um, the the you know, main, I guess, the main driving force behind that, Giorgio Sukalos. Well, some of the other uh, writers on there, the late Philip Coppins, uh, some of those individuals who uh, helped uh, espouse as well as research and uh, you know, contribute literature to the theory. Now, I focus uh, uh, primarily upon a lot of what Sitchin had wrote in regards to the Sumerians. Uh, the Sumerian culture is one that came out of uh, which uh, basically modern day Iraq. Uh, it is. By many, it is considered one of the oldest civilizations uh, on the planet. Now, the Sumerians 
creation epic um, has a, a considerable amount of uh, overlap with uh, the Hebrew and in, 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 in the Old Testament. Now, that being said, that's because it's believed that the Old Testament and the, and the Hebrew uh, creation epic uh, borrowed and, and, and took a lot from the Sumerians, that it was part of their creation epic. The Sumerians, um, nevertheless, uh, talk of the Anunnaki, as they are called, uh, which translates to those from the heavens, those who came from the heavens. Um, and this Anunnaki, it is said, created mankind, uh, known as the Adamu in uh, Sumerian, A-D-A-M-U, which is the meaning, you know, from the, from the earth, from the from the planet, from the earth, the dirt. Um, this, of course, is where the origin of the Hebrew origin for Adam is believed to have come from. Now, this Adamu being the first man that was created, it was said, it is believed, it is argued that this Adamu was created to assist the Anunnaki in their operations on the earth. Those who espouse the ancient astronaut theory tend to argue that the Anunnaki came here, uh, Sitchin being the primary, uh, the primary lead on this idea of this Anunnaki coming from a planet called Nibiru, which for those of you who have watched the most recent Star Trek movie, uh, Nibiru is mentioned in there, and it's uh, gaining some mainstream popularity. Uh, nevertheless, Sitchin describes this planet Nibiru, which is the 12th planet with the name of his first work. Uh, that's actually, according to him and his research in the Sumerian, uh, in the Sumerian tablets and, and what, what they can find of Sumerian language and stories, this Nibiru was a, is a 12th planet in the solar system that operates on a substantially different orbit than the rest of the planets do. And that is because of this odd, distinct orbit, we have not found it yet. Um, and that this planet is actually working its way back to our section of the solar system that we will be able to see it again, that we'll be able to find it again. Uh, he contend, contended that the Anunnaki were from this Nibiru and that they had come to Earth seeking to mine gold. Um, this gold was necessary for them to rehabilitate their atmosphere, that there was a process in which they were able to refine gold in a way to reestablish uh, some of the protective elements of their atmosphere that they had subsequently destroyed through their civilization, um, which, of course, carries a little bit of uh, echo in what, uh, in what some people are arguing that we're doing to, to our planet right now. Uh, so the story goes that this operation, of course, was... Mining gold is not an easy task. It is a physically demanding and laborious task. So the idea was that the Adamu was created by the Anunnaki, that they took the, the humanoid species, the hominid species that were on this planet, and genetically altered them to become mankind, to be smart enough to be able to listen to directions and strong enough to be able to carry the burdens, to carry the load, to mine the gold and not be too smart that we wouldn't be able to uh, uh, be too smart for our own good. However, it is told through subsequent stories by uh, not only Sitchin, uh, Van Donneken, but William Bramley, Bramley as well, who wrote the book, The Gods of Eden. They're discussing how uh, mankind eventually gained this knowledge. There was a, def a defection in the, uh, the Anunnaki, where those who wanted to keep us as slaves and those who wanted to free us and give us knowledge and give us the information about what we were and who we are and that uh, the flood epic of which almost every civilization carries uh, some sort of tale about was in an effort to eliminate mankind to eliminate them being an issue yet uh, one of the de defecting Anunnaki saved a handful of humans and of course, that's where the idea of Noah and the Noah's Ark is believed to have come from as well. Those who espouse the ancient astronaut theory contend. So 
it's a it's an it's an it's an amazing theory in that it is of course huge in terms of how we would view mankind and how we would view ourselves in the scope of the world um it's also for many very threatening in terms of religious aspects um and and i'll get into that a little bit later on but it is it's a, a profound theory in scope and for those of you who've seen the movie prometheus um prometheus borrowed very heavily upon the ancient astronaut theory uh, much of that was uh was in direct correlation with what uh, the ancient astronaut theory espouses it was also a very good movie so if you haven't seen it it's a very entertaining movie um This theory is one that I had been fascinated with for a number of years, uh, even before I knew it was formally known as uh, ancient astronaut theory. I had always wondered about um, in, in, in thinking about the idea of, of God and, you know, what is God and what, what you know, for those of us who believe in a God, uh, you know, whether it's you believe through a, a formalized religion or believe in some other type of God. Um, the implications of extraterrestrial life, how does that affect that? Does it change it? Does it nullify it? Does it, you know, how does it all fit in? Well, um, according to the Vatican, um, there does not seem to be a problem with it. The Vatican has worked very hard over the last few years of um, incorporating the idea of extraterrestrial life into their belief system incorporating it and not making it so that it is uh, too impossibly uh, un, um, you know, untenable concepts to work together. Um, and of course, the Vatican has an observatory in which they've been tracking the stars and, and those who are a little more conspiracy theorists uh, and that's in this respect believe that uh, the Vatican has been has known for a number of years uh, that uh, extraterrestrials have been visiting and extraterrestrials have been involved in in the development of mankind. So uh, it's interesting that they had recently over the last five years, well, five years or so, um, spoken about the idea of extraterrestrials, uh, particularly the Jesuits. Um, for me, the theory is interesting. It's compelling. Um, the thing that it's important that I, I have to throw out there to everybody, and, and this will this will offend those who are strong believers in this is that there's little solid scientific proof to prove that any of the ancient astronaut theory is true that being said there is a significant amount of circumstantial and secondary evidence that makes the argument very compelling which is why it's taken on a life of its own over the last few years the ideas uh, are reaching more people because it, it seems to be compelling in a sense that I think many people want to believe in there being a life outside this planet. And it gives a, um, you know, for those who have seen extraterrestrials or claim to have seen them or interacted with them, um, it gives them a little more um, footing, so to speak, in terms of, okay, well, this is the reason why. This is the reason why. This is why this has happened to me. Um, some of the most compelling evidence for me is looking at and examining the ancient artwork. And when I, I'm talking about ancient artwork, I'm talking about cave art. I'm talking about things that go back to you know, several thousand years of BC, um, depictions of what people describe as these gray aliens, seeing them on artwork, seeing them on, drawn on caves. They don't look human. They look humanoid, but they don't look human. Um, the, the Sego Canyon in Utah uh, pr pr provides perhaps some, mo some of the most amazing artwork. It depicts what looks like the proverbial gray aliens, and it shows them having like antenna-like objects coming from their heads. Um, and, and the thing is, is, this isn't just one part of the world. This is, this is showing up in Europe. It's showing up in Australia. It's showing up in China. It's showing up in the United States. It's showing up in in uh, in in parts of uh, South America, in, in Mexico, it, it's amazing. Some of the some of these ancient depictions that look like spacemen in suits and in in 
in like uh, astronaut suits. Um, it's, it's truly, uh, compelling visual evidence. Um, you know, depictions of what appear to be flying saucers on caves going back a thousand years, depictions of incredibly long armed individuals, incredibly tall individuals, because as, uh, Sitchin describes it about the Anunnaki, they were very tall, um, beings. And, uh, there's even some speculation that this idea of the, that the, that these tall, uh, in throughout South America in, in the, uh, in the Mayan religion, they talk of their gods being tall, blonde-haired, blue-eyed beings. Uh, and much of that description is given about the Anunnaki. Uh, that is why it's believed by some that the idea of this, that, that, that those who have those types of coloring and features perhaps have some sort of this genetic component in them still, the expressing. Um, but some of the, the artwork is just amazing. And, and, and that it will get your attention. No doubt. It, it will make you, if you look at this artwork and don't think, okay, this is interesting in the very least, whether you believe it, that's up to you, but it is certainly very compelling to look at. And for me, that is uh, some of the most uh, fascinating aspects. Now, going forward in time, you know, going into the middle ages and some of the artwork that's represented there, there's there's UFOs and things of that nature represented there. Um, one of the most compelling uh, photos, or well, I shouldn't say photos, paintings, um, is called Madonna and Child with the Infant Saint John. Now, this painting, um, I don't have the date offhand. I believe it's in the 14th, uh, 15th centuries. Um, yeah, over the shoulder of uh, of the Madonna, you see what appears to be flying in the sky, a UFO type object with a man pointing up at it lo or looking up at it, trying to see what it is. Um, you know, perhaps this is meant to be depicting some sort of image of God. Perhaps this is meant to be depicting some sort of image of a UFO. Perhaps it is both. Uh, nevertheless, it is very compelling to to visually see. Um, another uh, painting, and uh, looking through here and seeing, um, there's this painting, and bear with me because I believe this is in Italian, Bat Battissimo de Cristo, uh, and and that was from uh, the year 1710, and it shows. Um, what appears to be um, perhaps the exodus, but it shows this disc-like object in the sky with four beams shooting down upon the people. Um, perhaps that's meant once again to just depict, uh, depict a heavenly scene, but nevertheless, to look at it, it looks like the proverbial flying saucers that people who have evidence, you know, who have claimed to have seen it looks just like what they claim to have seen. It's once again, it's another compelling picture. And for me, when thinking about this ancient astronaut theory, this is the stuff, this is the stuff that makes me stop and ponder. Um, another painting, um, the uh, Tentor de la Vie de la Vierge. Uh, and this is uh, an unknown artist in 1330. Um, it, clearly shows it, i mean it's it's what everyone has described since you know the post-war era and science fiction movies it shows a flying saucer it is a flying saucer in the sky it, it, i i i would i would challenge anybody anybody to look at that and tell me in the 14th century someone did not paint a flying saucer into that painting because it looks exactly like it. Now I realize that for those art historians and you know, we would say, you know, be careful and you're projecting your ideas and your images and your thought processes into the work. And that may very well be true. But if that's, I guess my question would be to anybody who is a, an art historian, what is that supposed to be then? Because I don't know what that's supposed to be. I have absolutely no clue 
with that hat-shaped object. It floating in the sky above the buildings, above the, the castles. What that is supposed to be, I have no clue. Um, another interesting painting it's from 1350, and it's entitled The Crucifixion. And, of course, it depicts Christ's uh, crucifixion. However, in the corners of the painting, at the top corners, there appear to be people in these uh, spaceship-type objects flying in the sky above and looking. Um, it, it's very peculiar. The one gentleman uh, has does not show anything being depicted as being an angelic figure the way that you see in much of the, the, the halos being represented being around them. Uh, so I, I really don't know what they are. But nevertheless, uh, it's entitled The Crucifixion. And both of those look to be people flying in some sort of flying objects. Of course, we also have the reports of the ancient Egyptian Vimanas, the, the Egyptians that spoke about how their gods would fly uh, across the sky in these uh, ships. There's depictions of, of the gods having this kind of ability throughout time. Um, so you begin to look at all this evidence. This, and yes, it is circumstantial evidence. And it may, becomes difficult to completely dismiss the theory. For those who are hardcore scientists who want only scientific proof, they'll dismiss it simply on the fact that, that, that there is none, that there is no solid concrete evidence. Um, I think it's a little short-sighted. And the reason that I say that, I'm not, I'm not expecting anybody to jump on this bandwagon and say that, that this is absolutely it, that this has got everything right and this is the answer, because I don't know that that's the case either. Uh, as with anything, I think that the truth is somewhere in the middle of all this. How, however, it's it's important that, you know, do we look at this and say, okay, perhaps there's something here. That doesn't mean that every single person that creates some sort of uh, you know, alien theology or alien theory, that it's all true, because I don't necessarily think that that's the case either. But there seems to be enough circumstantial evidence that we should at least ponder the possibility that there seems to have been some sort of extraterrestrial involvement over the years with our civilizations. I'm not trying to give them credit for developing everything we've done, because I certainly don't think that's the case either. Do I think that may have, may have perhaps aliens guided, you know, perhaps, you know, and I don't necessarily think that the idea of, of religion and extraterrestrials are two entirely separate ideas either. Um, perhaps we were created by an alien. Okay. I mean, if you think about it, uh, for those who follow any of the major religions, isn't God a bit of an extraterrestrial anyways? In theory, he's not of this earth. He or she is not of this earth, depending on how you view whatever you believe God is. So I don't think that, that the, the, the idea of religion and having an extraterrestrial origin are two um, unreconcilable opinions. Different, yes, but not unreconcilable. Unre Nevertheless, there is much more work to be done in this field. And in, as I said, scientific evidence is needed, but it's a starting point. And it's something that I wanted to discuss with my listeners. Is I at least want you to think about it. It's up to you to decide. I certainly don't know that I buy in everything, but there's certainly enough there. Find the images. Look at the paintings that I discussed. Search for them. Look at them and, and decide for yourself what you think. So that's what I have for you this week. A reminder, I will not be back with you next week. Um, but I will be back in two weeks. Uh, until then, you all have a great one.